Hello everyone, Lawrence here with the Inwin 101, which is a smaller, more affordable, and perhaps a little bit more of a practical version of the Inwin 303, which I reviewed some time ago. First of all, let's start with the packaging. So it's good enough for just the case, but the foam is very thin, and I really wouldn't recommend shipping a full system in the original box. Accessory wise, you get individual bags for each type of screws. There are 10 zip ties, which is more than with any other case, but the manual while color printed is very limited. Anyway, the case itself then. As you can see, the front is very plain. There's absolutely nothing on the front except for the illuminated Inwin logo. So this with the white version, it's blue illumination. With the black version, you get red illumination. For some reason, this is probably the only 2017 product that doesn't come with RGB lighting, which is super confusing. I really wish the front was RGB to go with the rest of the RGB build. I really like the design of the logo. It's like a floating gloss bit. And also the power button is like a gloss see-through button and it actually has a very satisfying click to it. The feet are very similar to the 303 but they've been improved ever so slightly so now there's a lovely little chamfer on there which picks up the light in some cases looks a lot more stylish than the original 303. Just like the front panel the top panel is again completely plain no cutouts no fancy design nothing except for the IO so you get dual USB 3.0s and your audio jacks that's all the IO that there is that's all that there is on the top and the front panel. On the left side then there is a full height hexagonal airflow design. This is basically where your exhaust will come from if you do decide to run an all-in-one liquid cooler in this case. Looking at the rear panel you can see that the power supply is on top. There isn't a single included fan with this case and there are only 120 millimeter options. The rear fan can be adjusted upwards and downwards about two centimeters which is pretty handy. Also because this weird in-win IO is a bit recessed the fan sticks out a lot more so it's easier to run triple fans on your heatsink or run really thick radiators without it hitting your motherboard. The PCIe slots go all the way down but we'll see later that there's actually a little bit of room at the bottom so you can tuck your cables underneath instead of having to wrap them in front of the motherboard. The right side panel then is perhaps a lot more interesting. This is where you get a full tempered glass side panel. The gloss itself is actually pretty thin at only 3 millimeters, but I really like the way it's implemented here. It's strong enough and at the bottom and the top there are plastic uh, rails so you can easily mount it. It just slots in and then there are two push buttons to lock the glass side panel in place. The push pins are actually very similar to what you find on a stock Intel or stock AMD CPU cooler. It feels a lot more sturdy than it looks like. There's a slight dark tint to the window but it's not too bad so you can still see your internal components without putting a bunch of lights in there which is pretty nice. On to the bottom of the case then again very similar to the 303 but improved. So the dust filter is full length but now it slides on the feet instead of on tiny little metal rails so it's really easy now to remove it and reinstall it. I really like it. Um, however what I don't like are the fan mounts so you get triple 120 millimeter fan mounts but they're not on sliders, so if you have weird radiator spacing, for example, you'll have to drill your own holes. If you want to use 140mm fans, which actually fit in this case, again, you have to drill your own holes. It's just really lazy and from in-win, and it just annoys me a lot, because the room is there. Why would they artificially limit the capabilities of their product like that by not including a couple of extra holes for your 140mm fans? Really annoys the hell out of me. Now you'll want to use these bottom fans because it's where all your air intake is going to come from. It's the only filtered intake on this case. So you really want to make sure you don't run it on top of a carpet or anywhere near a carpet because there's only about two centimeters of room between the dust filter and whatever it's resting on. And with a carpet, it's just going to choke your case completely. So don't run it on carpet. Anyway, rant over, let's get into the case. So the right side panel, the tempered glass panel, really easy to remove. You just pull on the little pins and the entire panel comes off super easy. No hard hinges or thumb screws or any of that stuff. It's probably one of my favorite implementations of a full glass side panel. Once you're inside, you can see that the top has now become an attic instead of you know having the basement with most cases, now we have an attic. Entire length of the case, this attic, and then in front of it are dual hard drive caddies. So this is where you can put your full size mechanical hard drives or SSDs. The caddies are the usual bended and put a drive in type. So it's easy enough to install, easy enough to remove. It's a bit cheap feeling. It's not the awesome sort of drive caddy, but it's good enough 
especially with how few people are still using mechanical hard drives. I just put one in my build because people sometimes use them. As you can see, this attic has a large cutout so your power supply can easily breathe from within the main chamber and also exhaust some hot air out of it. Don't worry guys, you're not going to overheat your power supply from this design. ATX power supplies are actually designed as an exhaust fan according to the ATX specifications. Uh, what's also really nice is that there's an extra little cutout for your 8-pin or CPU fan cables. The left chamber then actually does use thumb screws. Um, so these are captive thumb screws. Again, handy, just tilts, lifts out of the way and you can start working on your cables. On the side panel there is a felt liner which reduces the rattle because now the panel has something soft in between you know, the chassis of the case and the actual panel so there won't be any rattle. Now all the cables inside are full black and they're also rather flexible so my only little complaint here is that the audio cable is a little bit too thick for the height of the motherboard standoffs but more about that later. As you can see a massive amount of room for any length power supply with modular cables that you can plug in. There is also a giant CPU cutout so if you need to install a CPU cooler or water block after you've installed the motherboard no problem whatsoever there's plenty of room for that. Now also really really important to note is that there is a plastic shroud for basically it's intended for all-in-one liquid coolers and it exhausts out of the site. Now if you want to remove this like I did to make everything look that little bit cleaner it's only three screws it just slides up and you can push it out of the way really handy to do. It's lovely that they included something like this and if you do want to run other types of uh, radiators say because there is again room for a 360 or a 280 if you want to run that you can easily just weld on or screw on your own brackets so it's like it's really nice that you can easily take that bit of plastic out of the way there are also plenty of zip tie hoops and points to attach your zip ties to so cable management really isn't a problem at all with this case so then moving on to my build let's start with the specs first so i'm running four of these Anidase Halo fans. You can get these in RGB but because the front panel only comes with blue lights I just put in the blue LEDs fans that I had laying around instead of waiting for my RGB review samples. Um, I then run a Seagate hard drive basically just to implement the hard drive in my review because I don't usually use one but some of you guys will use it so it's handy to have. Then there's also a Samsung SSD and I'm running a SFX power supply um, basically because I really like the cabling on it uh, compared to my ATX Be Quiet power supply. Uh, and then I'm just running my Aorus X370 Gaming 5 motherboard, a Ryzen 1700 CPU clocked at 4 GHz. Uh, there's 16 gigs of RAM and then there's the D15. Now I quickly realized that the D15 was never going to fit because again it's only a 120 millimeter fan at the rear so good chance of you know getting anything large to fit but my D15 actually does fit all I had to do was put different fans on it. So I'm running a 140 millimeter Silent Wings 3 fan in the center and a 120 millimeter uh, Silent Wings 3 fan in the front. So the first thing I actually did was remove this plastic cover. It made it a lot more easy for me to get access to everything uh, to work in the case and also I don't like the look of the plastic stuff inside the case so I decided not to use it. The next step for me was to route the audio cable underneath the motherboard so that it won't be in front of the motherboard and look really messy. The next step for me was then to install the motherboard standoffs because only the ITX mounts were actually pre-installed. Next up is installing this IO plate which is really annoying with in-wing cases because it's not a fixed location you can actually still slide it up and down so it's a bit annoying once you drop in the motherboard you still have to align your IO shield. They've been doing it forever and it annoys the hell out of me I really wish they would stop doing it. So once you put in your motherboard you can see that this audio cable if you route it underneath and there actually is a cutout specifically designed for this use the cable actually gets clamped a little bit between the board and the motherboard tray so it's a bit tight you want to be really gentle when you're adjusting. A lovely upgrade from the 303 is that you no longer need to remove the feet in order to install the bottom fans there are actually little holes in the feet so you can screw through those. So having installed all the four fans I then moved on to installing the drives. Now what's really nice is that for your SSD mount you can actually mount it forward or backwards depending on how much room you need for your SSD connector. I really like this feature and I wish all case manufacturers would do it because it's just a couple of extra holes and it makes life a lot easier. With all this done before installing my power supply I already started doing some cable management just to clean stuff up and to make my life a lot easier afterwards. I then put in the power supply you do have to put it in from the center and then slide it back so if you have a enormously long one with cables already 
attached. It might be a little bit tricky, but you can always attach the cables later. It's no problem. Now, because I used an SFX power supply, which you really shouldn't do, but I just did it, you know. Um, basically, my 24-pin cable was a bit short, so I ended up running the 24-pin cable from the top, which also made my um, modified motherboard look a lot better. Um, so I guess it's nice looking. Uh, I wouldn't recommend everyone to do it, but in my case, it kind of worked out that way for me. So then I went on to install my graphics card and I had another little annoyance there. Basically, it comes with a GPU bracket, so, you know, to prevent your sag. But in my case, it actually touched the fan on the Strix cooler. And so the fan wouldn't spin anymore. So I decided to just go without a GPU bracket. And then I spent about five more minutes on cable management. Here's the result. It's not super clean, but it's good enough for now. And given that I'll be making some hardware changes later, it's basically all the effort that I care to put in at the moment, especially because there's only one glass panel. If it was a full glass case, I would put more effort in, but this is good enough for now. Overall then, the build was actually really easy and the case itself is actually well thought out, mostly. Um, it's really easy to build in if you already know the right hardware to buy. So if you're going to have to drill holes for 140mm fans and if you have to modify how you install the fans on your CPU cooler or if you run a 280mm radiator, all that sort of stuff, it can be a little bit tricky but if you get the right hardware, it's super easy and anyone can build in this case. So overall then, really nice case. Uh, only thing I'm going to rant on about and keep on ranting about until they fix it is the really annoying 120mm only fan mount. And then to a lesser degree, the fact that the front panel is not RGB. I mean, you know, it's only three LEDs in there, might as well make it nine and call it an RGB case. Um, I really wish anyone would do that, but maybe for the 102 or something like that. Um, overall, Really happy with my purchase. I actually bought this case instead of just getting a review sample. So I'm happy with my purchase. I think you guys will be as well if you buy one. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Guys, if you like this video, please press that like button. Subscribe to the channel. It helps me out an insane amount. If you want to follow the channel more, I do really frequent updates on Twitter where Twitter is mostly a complaining channel and then Instagram where I show off really cool stuff and press events and that stuff. Um, so Instagram, Twitter, go there. If you want to support the channel, I think I've already got it pretty nice with my lights and my audio setup. If you want to really support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below. For now guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.